The next thing to to look at when selecting an RTD would be the type of electrical connection to it. Um, you know, we, we have two, three, and, and four wire um, circuits that can be used with RTDs. The most common are the three and the four wire. And when we're looking at providing a high accuracy measurement, the four wire is the one that wins out over all the others. So the other part um, in a uh, RTD, there can be kind of a thermocouple effect or an EMF created, which is caused by internal junctions within the RTD. Um, you know, you're joining dissimilar metals in some cases. Um, and again, this varies by manufacturer. There are ways to minimize it. Um, but without the proper precautions there, you can have, um, have a measurement error caused by EMF within the, in, within the probe. So, you know, how can we get rid of those? Well, the, the three-wire connection, this, this relies on all three of the leads having an equal resistance because your control equipment is going to assume that the compensation loop, you know, typically there's uh, two red leads and one white one. And it'll measure the two red leads and then subtract what it sees there from the white and one of the reds. And in the real world, all three of those leads don't necessarily have exactly the same resistance. And if we look at the typical 18 gauge cable, a worst case scenario, we can have about 0.16 Fahrenheit for every 100 feet of that cable. And if we look at some other kind of typical numbers here that we've calculated for the different wire sizes, let's say we, we've got a grade A sensor and we've got uh, 22 gauge leads we can typically put about 15 feet of lead wire on that sensor and still have that sensor maintain its original interchangeability tolerance. If you go over that, there's a good chance that you're going to fall out of that tolerance range. You know, the sensing element itself is still going to be within, but, but where it matters is at the end of that cable, and that's where uh, you need to concern yourself with the length of the cable and the wire size that it's attached to. Now there are there are ways to eliminate this by balancing the the um, lead wires. So we, you would take all three of those leads and measure them, and then adjust the low ones up so that they all have roughly the same resistance. So Bill, can you talk just a little bit more about that that lead wire balancing? Because that's that's typically something that's done by the manufacturer, not necessarily something that would be done by the end user, correct? Right, that, that's the, the best way. I mean, they typically would have the right equipment to be able to do that. Uh, it, you, you may see things like, um, you know, the, the cable may be labeled with, you know, do not cut cable or, or accuracy will be affected. And, you know, typically what's happening there is that they put some kind of a, a trim resistor in that cable, right, typically at the end of the cable where, you know, where you can get at it. Uh, you know, to make the uh, adjustment. Um, so if you do have a sensor that has a long extension cable on it, you know, look for a label like that. And if they're, you know, if you've got, you know, 30 feet of cable, 22 gauge cable on an RTD and there's no label and there's no um, uh, anything that says that it was ever balanced, that, that should maybe raise a red flag and you check that just to make sure that it's, you know, it still falls within the tolerance that you're expecting it to be at. The easiest way to get rid of all that is just to use a four-wire circuit. They fully compensate for the lead resistance and then if you have a, a bad terminal block or if you have a connector where you're connecting an extension cable, uh, that fully compensates for any variance in resistance between each of those four conductors. So this is really the best way, and it's especially the best way if you have a long extension cable from the RTD back to your, um, you know, like a, any kind of signal conditioning equipment, whether it's a chart recorder or a PLC or whatever it might be. So, Bill, just one more comment on that on that four wire. It, uh, as far as recommending that, um, you do have to have a, a control system or transmitter that that handles a four wire system. 
Um, otherwise, you, you don't really get the, a lot of times we will see people that, that uh, go ahead and, and buy a four wire and then they, then they only connect it up to three terminals. Uh, you don't get you don't get the benefit if you if you're not able to connect it up uh, correctly with the with the control system or the transmitter that you have. Right. In in years past, I think the the state of the art with the electronics and transmitters and things said three wire. Um, and and now I, most of the uh, even some of the smaller little hockey puck transmitters and things they all have a four wire um, input. You, you do need to make sure that it is a true four wire. Um, connection and not just a, uh, you know, that they're putting a jumper between a couple of the terminals to make it look like it's a four wire. It does have to actually do the, um, the full uh, current potential lead wire compensation. You know, so if we look real quick here at, at um, some electrical diagrams, you know, with a two wire sensor, you're just adding lead resistance into the sensing element and you're going to get a, you know, a too high of a temperature reading. It's really not recommended for uh, anything to do with any of the biofarm processes. Three wire. Uh, this works okay if you have like a uh, you know a sensor that's going right into a, a terminal block inside of a connection head. You may have a transmitter there, so you've got very short lead wire run. Uh, there really wouldn't need the four wire, although it's still uh, just it would be good practice to do it, but. Three wires work just fine in those cases. And in the four wire connections or current potential method, uh, it shows how it fully compensates for any um, resistance that you have in the wires coming from the sensing element. Another way to look at this for uh, every 0.04 ohms of variation between the, each of the three leads in a three wire. It, you, you end up with about a tenth of a degree C error. Um, and the smaller the gauge wire, the worse that error gets. And of course, if you use bigger wire, it, it gets smaller. 